As Bruno said, I'd like to introduce you to some of the new data we've published on the banking statistics. And I will show those data to you in our tool, the BIS Statistics Explorer. So there are various ways that you can access BIS data, and the Statistics Explorer is uh, perhaps the easiest of those. And you can find it under the statistical, statistical tools menu on the left and go to the Explorer. And so we published two sets of statistics on international banking activity. One is the locational banking statistics. The other is the consolidated banking statistics. Um, the locational, or the LBS, they are based on the residence or the location of the bank, and they include any business between offices of the same bank. The consolidated, or the CBS, they are based on the headquarters or the nationality of the bank, and they exclude or they net out all the office between related entities of the same bank. And so if you're interested in questions about the uh, looking at the currency composition of bank's balance sheet or the distribution or the geographical distribution of banking activity, then the locational banking statistics are the better bet data set to use. Whereas if you're interested in banks' risk exposures, their country risk exposures, then the consolidate banking statistics is what we suggest. So with uh, the data yesterday, we expanded the currency details that we publish in the locational banking statistics um, about banks' cross-border business or the business they do with uh, banks, companies, and governments abroad. Before, we published only the currency details for total assets and liabilities of the banks, where the total assets sum together all types of instruments like uh, loans, deposits, debt securities, derivatives. Now. We're adding a currency breakdown for the loan and deposit component of the total assets and liabilities. Um, so these new data are useful for analyzing the vulnerabilities posed by foreign currency borrowing. For example, loans can be added to bond issues to estimate the buildup of total foreign currency debt in a particular country. Uh, I will come back to that in a few minutes when I discuss the BIS Global Liquidity Indicators. So these new data are available in Table A6, and uh, A6 is what shows the, how much borrowers in a particular country owe to banks in other countries. We split the old Table A6 into two, and so the new data with the currency distribution of loans is available in Table A6-1. And if you look in the Explorer, you see a long list of countries. These are all the borrowing countries. and so we'll just pick a country, let's say China. So if I go to the table showing China, then uh, in here, the, head, the top figure is cross-border positions. There's, you find a figure of 850 billion. So that's how much money the banks outside of China have lent to borrowers inside China. So that's the total assets of the, the banks. We also have liabilities, so that's 720 billion. That's how much residents in China have placed with banks outside of China. Uh, within this table, we have various breakdowns. What I'm going to go down to is the currency breakdown. And you can see that of the total of 850 billion in credit to China, 480 billion of that is denominated in US dollars and 49 billion is denominated in euros. The new data that we've added is then shown under loans and deposits, where we can see of the 480 billion in US dollar credit to China, 383 billion is in the form of, uh, of loans. Or for euro, we have 49 billion total euro credit to China, and uh, about 42 billion of that is denominated in, or is in the form of loans. The main difference between these two numbers will be bonds, money market instruments, other debt securities that are held by banks. Now, as I mentioned, when we published the data for A6, we, we split the old table into two, and the second part of this table, A6-2, shows the bilateral cross-border business of banks in up to 29 countries that report the locational statistics. 
against borrowers and lenders in more than 200. So it's taking the same data that I sh just showed you uh, with the currency distribution, but splitting it up by the geography of uh, where the money is coming from. And so again, if I take China as an example, I can just and what uh, the 850 billion that we saw in the other table, here it is for the assets of banks and 719 for the, the liabilities of banks. Um, now, what you see in this table is you can see that uh, of the 850, bil or 850 billion in credit to China, 353 billion is coming from banks located in Hong Kong. Uh, another 60 billion is coming from banks in Australia. Uh, we have 51 billion from banks in Chinese Taipei. Um, similar information is available for the liability side, and uh, you can see that, again, the number for Hong Kong is very large. So residents of mainland China have placed assets worth about 320 billion with banks in Hong Kong. So these are the liabilities of banks in Hong Kong to Chinese residents. Um, now, it's quite typical for uh, an international banking center like Hong Kong to have very large cross-border assets and liabilities because there is a lot of intergroup business through these international financial centers. So they're, they use the financial centers to route the money to uh, the final borrowers and lenders. Now, it's important to note that what this table is showing is the distribution of international banking activity. It is not showing which banks have the largest exposures. So when, I, when we talk about banks in Hong Kong lending $353 billion to uh, banks in, in China or to residents of China, then this includes all sorts of different kinds of banks. It is not referring to banks uh, headquartered in, in uh, Hong Kong. For that kind of information, if you're interested in the, the exposures of banks, then the consolidated statistics are the uh, better set data set to look at. And so you go back to the main menu for the Explorer, click on the consolidated banking statistics, and look at B4, which shows for the residents of banks' counterparties, for the residents of the borrowers, the, uh, who, which banking systems have lent money to them. So again, we can select China as the country of interest. And what we see here in the left on all the, uh, the, the rows is the nationality of different banking systems. So looking at Australia, we had an, uh, the total assets of banks in Australia or claims of banks in Australia to China were about 60 billion in the, the other table. Here, they're only 24 billion. And that's because what this table is showing is only the exposures of banks that are headquartered in Australia, so are of Australian nationality, and it is excluding any activity that foreign banks might be routing through their, uh, their Australian offices. The, there's a column here called international claims, so total international claims. That gives a number of 845 billion, which is similar to the number that we showed in the other table. So you can interpret international claims as cross-border claims. They are broader, but for simplicity, you can think of them as the same. But this table includes more information than just the cross-border business. And so you can see that the, the total is much larger, the total column here, 1.1 trillion, uh, is much larger than just this, this international or cross-border component. And that's because this table also shows the business of foreign banks' uh, local subsidiaries. So foreign banks have operations in China, so subsidiaries in China that are lending to Chinese residents, they're captured in this column called local positions in local currencies. And the sum of these local positions and these international or cross-border positions is what gives you the total. Um, just looking at the example for China, the banks with the largest exposure are UK banks. So 146 billion is their total exposure to China. Now, UK banks include 
HSBC and Standard Chartered, which have large Asian operations. Uh, and then the second largest exposures are held by U.S. banks at $82 billion. Now, there are lots of other columns in this table. Let me just explain this other one called claims on an ultimate risk basis, the total. You can see that this number for, the, uh, for, for any particular banking system, it tends to be larger. So for our Australian banks, we have 24 billion on an immediate counterparty basis and 28 billion on an ultimate risk basis. And the reason for that is that this column is capturing any lending to Chinese affiliates outside of China that might be guaranteed by the parents in China. For example, an Australian bank might lend to a Chinese, the branch of a Chinese bank in, say, Hong Kong. Um, but if that, if the lend, if the borrowing by that Chinese branch in Hong Kong is then guaranteed by the headquarters in China, then we say there's a risk transfer into China, and that's why this this amount is larger than the immediate counterparty. So amounts that are uh, that a bank records. On one country, on an immediate counterparty basis, they can be larger or smaller, depending on how those risk transfers work across borders. 